सेल्फ केयर इज द न्यू फ्लफी बजवर्ड इन द फील्ड ऑफ पर्सनल ग्रोथ हैंड्स अप इफ यू थिंक सेल्फ केयर इज समथिंग यू डू आफ्टर यू हैव टेकन केयर ऑफ एवरी वन एल्स एंड इफ यू कैन फिट इट इन टू योर बिजी स्केड्यूल आई एम नॉट सरप्राइज मोस्ट पीपल हैव हर्ड दीज वर्ड्स बट हैव नो क्लू वॉट टू डू विद इट सो दिस वीडियो फोकसिस ऑन द मोस्ट इम्पॉर्टेंट इंग्रीडियंट फॉर योर हैप्पीनेस सेल्फ केयर हेलो दे माई रिटर्निंग व्यूअर्स थैंक यू फॉर योर कंटिन्यूइंग सपोर्ट and for those of you tuning into my channel for the first time welcome i'm sheila and you're watching lumia 24 light on so what is self care and why is it important most people think self care is something you do when you're feeling run down or feeling stressed like slipping into a bath filled with warm suds on a saturday night or a massage because your muscles feel stiff well these are some elements of self care but these are just the surface expression of something which is much much deeper i read this somewhere and it's so true self care isn't a list of to do's it's a commitment to doing whatever it takes to take care of yourself physically emotionally and spiritually over the long term now we do try to include some stuff in our routine like our morning juices our meditation our resolution to include more fruits and veggies in the diet we want to feel healthy and energetic but the catch is when life gets in the way these are the very first things that we let slide down the priority list whether you simply don't feel like you have enough hours in the day or you're so busy caring for others that the thought of caring for yourself sounds more exhausting than rejuvenating it's easy to put self care on the back burner self care is non negotiable my friends and here's why we walk around talking to ourselves in our head all the time and mostly it's to say mean unkind things about ourselves like i'm a loser when will i learn i will never have any friends no one likes me these are based on the stories we tell ourselves about what has happened in our life or what we think people say to us now when we carve time to meet our own needs these voices start to lose their power because you're sending very powerful message to your own subconscious about your increased self worth and when you start treating yourself better increased happiness better health and confidence these are the side effects cool right yes improved productivity is a big yes because of self care mostly because when we make ourselves a priority we learn to say no to a lot of things people and situations that drain us or are not for our highest good you will stop being a doormat you will stop taking on other people's crap which means you will learn to say things like i'm sorry i don't take calls after 6 pm it's my pilates time or i don't eat cake or I don't think you should keep asking for my advice if you don't want to do anything about it. When you start letting go of your need to do and be everything for everyone, you will have more time for your priorities and your goals. If you want the science behind it, self-care activities activate your parasympathetic nervous system. What this means is that your body goes into a restful, rejuvenating mode. helping it to improve its immune system which in turn means fewer colds fewer flu and upset stomachs and that enhances your general well-being you will be happier more positive and resilient able to bounce back from adversities faster socrates has famously said no thyself he was a wise man because unless you know who you are at your core what you like and what your passions are you will lead rather wimpy lives practicing self care requires thinking about what you really love to do this exercise of figuring out what makes you feel passionate what makes you feel inspired these help you understand yourself a lot better sometimes this can even spark a change in career or getting back to some old hobbies or interests Isn't that a great way to let go of your dead end job? So, now that you know why it's important, the next question is what can you do? 
Now, before I give you some self-care tips, let me tell you what it's not. Going pubbing and downing shots, eating chocolate cake or smoking pot, this is not self-care, even though you may argue that you feel really relaxed when you do it. That is covering some deeper issues that you need to resolve. The message is, love yourself. And because I get this question all the time, let me give you a few samples of what self-care routine looks like. Pro tip number one is making time for healthy eating and exercise. And I mean this. I know so many people who run on empty because they don't find time to fit food into their schedule. And when they do eat, it's a pizza or a pastry. I get it. It's hard enough to eat healthy in a world that is filled with processed food options. Also, sometimes eating junk feels like self-care. I sometimes use a pizza or an ice cream as a reward for a job well done. Nothing wrong with an occasional indulgence. Trouble comes when junk becomes your go-to food. Self-care means rehauling the way you see food. Start small. Do you want to eat less sugar? Control your carb intake. Focus on one area at a time rather than trying to overhaul your entire diet at once. And the next one that's thrown under the train, exercise. It's easy to neglect exercise when you're overextended because, well, exercise requires time, it requires energy, it requires different clothes and, of course, a shower. It's daunting, it's messy, it's uncomfortable. But you have to make time for it in your schedule. Get a workout buddy or a runner's group and hold yourself accountable. If you're really, really, really busy, try an app like Best Me or Cult Fit. It suggests specific exercises and routines based on how much time you have, even if it's only five minutes. Of course, no matter how busy or unmotivated you are, sometimes you just have to get up and do it. Pro tip number two is to practice emotional hygiene. We get up and brush our teeth, but our minds are often like sewage traps. Emotional well-being is very touchy-feely, I know, but that's the sort of point of emotional hygiene. There are quite a few things that you could do to manage your emotions and reach the groundedness that you require. Top on the list is getting rid of all people, all situations, all habits that are pulling you down. Follow processes to purge your mind of hate, resentment, self-pity, victimhood and move into a more empowered state. One of the top tools that I use for this is gratitude, followed closely by forgiveness. The Hawaiian technique Hoopno Pono is a wonderful, wonderful tool to practice emotional cleanse. I will link one of my favorite videos in the description box. Taking care of your emotional needs is so important. It will make you happier and in turn, your world will be a happier place. Self-care pro tip number three is to nurture your spirit. Meditation, of course, is top of my list. Start by spending just five to 10 minutes sitting with yourself or use apps like Calm or Insight Timer, which have got many meditations based on your need and time. Journaling is yet another great way to get your demons from your head out into the open. It's cathartic and cleansing. I have done an entire video on journaling I have put the link in the description box below. Spend time doing what you love. Get together with your friends, take mini breaks with your partner, or even just walk in the park with your dog. All these will nurture your spirit. Start small. If you have never practiced self-care, you may feel overwhelmed or even dismiss these as new age mumbo jumbo. Don't take my word for it. Just try one or two things and see how it makes you feel. If you don't make a commitment to caring for yourself, no one else will. Take charge now. If you need help with your self-care routines, reach out to me. Share this video with your family, your friends, your colleagues. The world will be a better place with empowered, happy people. Let's spread the light, folks.